now we'll look at this uh, one last aspect of our program which is the time series analysis the though this is a huge volume in itself right just giving you a, a brief flavor about this model till now whatever the data we have worked on whether it is car specific data or telecom company specific data whatever the data we have looked at or bank loan specific data there was no time angle in that when i say time angle probably the yearly values or monthly data there is no time specific angle in that right it was mostly on at a specific point in time we have collected the data like bank loans this is the data as of today are cars on a specific day all the cars have been captured but when i say time series data over a period of time i keep collecting the values let's say sales monthly sales data every month i try to capture what is the sales right or prices over a, a on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis on some frequency basis i'll try to capture the data so that kind of analysis where we don't look at factors or any of the stuff we simply do the projections based on the past values we do the projection based on the past values that is what we classify as the time series analysis so based on last month data this month sales will be determined are based on the last 12 months pattern i'll decide for the next 12 months such kind of analysis falls into a time series analysis now for the purpose of uh, analysis i'll take one data which is having a time series element in this i'll take a data which is having the time series element in that there is one file called catalog okay which data i did not delete the variables i did deleted the work which i have done earlier i mean the same data file so this is a kind of time series data why this is containing a monthly data monthly sales of men's clothing women's clothing jewelry of a particular store this is month because this is primarily on mmddyy format so jan 1989 feb 1989 march 1989 april right and again here you have 1990 91 92 93 so i think they have captured it up to 98 almost 10 years data this is the 10 years monthly data they have 120 records 120 records right now they have for last uh, 120 months they have captured what is the men's sales clothing uh, men's clothing what was the sales women's clothing and jewelry now here based on the past data forget about these remaining five elements we'll come back to them based on the past data past 10 years data i want to forecast for the next one year 
right? Probably these dates are just, I don't look at them from 89 to 98, probably if this is the current situation at which I have to forecast, right? I need to, I am having the last 10 years data with me. Now I have to forecast for the remain next one year or two years. So when I do the analysis or forecasting without attribution to any variable, see till now whatever we have done as a forecast was we have attributed to some variables. If I have to uh, forecast the price, I have attributed to engine size, I have attributed to length, some other factors, some other factors. Whereas when we talk about time series analysis, the dependency will attribute to the past data only. Right? Any time series. So this month's sale is based on past month's sale. Whether it is last one month or last three months or probably uh, the last quarter as well as uh, this quarter or last year, same month and uh, last month. It could be any number of combinations. But we are trying to do the forecasting <coughs> based on the pattern of the existing data itself. Especially uh, for your uh, stock markets data or various uh, data, based on the past data pattern, you are trying to do a forecasting for the future. Whatever may be the number of periods. That is where your time series analysis is becoming handy. And in this time series analysis, there are two, three important factors to look at. One is seasonal pattern in your data. Like probably in case of sales, let's say for some kind of clothes, there could be high sales in winter, but very low sales in summer. Again, next year also the same pattern could continue. So what could happen is sometimes in your data, there could be some kind of seasonal pattern. Again, if even if it is a daily data, season doesn't mean only summer or winter, but some pattern. In some period it goes up, in some period it goes down. So there could be some kind of a seasonality pattern in your data also. So I, I may have to look at the seasonality pattern. And even the forecast that I have to do, it may have to take into consideration the seasonality factor. There are quite number of these kind of situations possible. So for that, one good thing to look at is, first try to do a simple plot, seasonal plot, just to see whether there is any kind of seasonality in your data. What you can do for that is, all this forecasting heading, under analysis will cover more or less into your time series models right so here i will go with a sequence chart or probably yeah probably i'll go with a sequence chart which means over a period of time it will do the charting for me but before i do that one thing i have to make sure is the date the date format of SPSS is not this format. This is something probably I would have pulled from Excel or some location. But SPSS does not accept the date in this format. The way I have to give date format in SPSS is I go into data, define dates. Go into data, define dates. It should be in one of these formats only. Years, years and quarters, years and months. This is your current pattern because it's a monthly data. Years and months or probably you can have it as years and quarters, weeks and work days. One of these patterns, it should be there. Now when I'm saying years and months pattern, it asks me what is the starting year. Probably 1989. As far as this data is concerned, and month is first month, Jan. Jan 1989 is my first data. Now, based on this, it will actually create some values. Year is 1989. Months are 1 to 12. 
and this is how it formats your data. This is an accepted date, not the first one. This is a dummy. Because you have pulled it from Excel or something, it comes in that model. But the actual like, accepted SPSS date format is this one. If you had specified days, it will take. In the date format, it will take. But then it will write, for each of the record, it will write 1st Jan 1989, 2nd Jan 1989, 3rd Jan 1989. It writes it like that. So there will be 365 records for a year. So here, this is the first aspect. Then I will do, as, uh, then I will go for a seasonal chart, sequence chart. Wherein it asks for the variables. So I will look at uh, the sale of men's clothing, women's clothing and jewellery. The time axis label is my date which I got in the new format. This is my, the, the time axis which is the, or is x axis. Now based on that, if I go with one chart per variable, so one for, uh, uh, one for men's clothing, one for women's and one for jewellery. If I want a chart, it computes the charts like this. Now you see, sequence plot, men's clothing, this is the pattern. One it is showing there is a kind of uppish trend, just visual inspection. There is a kind of upward trend over the years and there is some kind of a seasonal movement. In some periods there is up, in some months there is a down. That is a typical pattern we are observing in the sale of the men's clothing. Now look at women's clothing, more or less the same way. There is an uppish trend overall, but again there is some kind of upward and downward in the middle. Whereas when we are looking at Jewelry, it's looking more or less flat. In some seasons it is going up, but immediately coming back. Overall there is no gradual drift upwards. It's almost a kind of a flat kind of a trend. So even if the prediction has to happen, even if the projections have to happen, the projections have to take all these factors into consideration. The most common, uh, uh, the most common mm -hmm. Technical analysis, the most common uh, uh, time series analysis patterns will take into consideration the trend which is either upward movement or downward movement overall as well as seasonality. They will, they will take into consideration both the trend as well as seasonality because trend wise if it is upward which means overall is it going up or is it going down. That is what is the trend. Or is it flat? In case of uh, jewellery, it is flat. Whereas in case of men's clothing and women's clothing, it is looking on an upward movement. So even the forecast has to take that into consideration. Along with that, the seasonality. Probably in uh, some months, it is going to the peak. In some months, it is falling down. Now you see, probably these peaks... Almost, there is some pattern, right, for these peaks, looking like there is some pattern. Probably even in this case, you see the peaks that are going up, there is some kind of pattern in the peaks. So, when a forecast has to be done, a similar way it has to be forecasted. And uh, that's where, when I create my model, now there are so many aspects to be looked at. One is uh, the trend, one is the uh, seasonality. Because of all these things, various time series models have come into picture. Time series actually uses three major, three major workouts on the data. <coughs> In short, the model is called as the ARIMA model. 
where you use the concept called autoregression, moving average and integrated. What it means is autoregression is nothing but I do a regression but not with some other variables but with the same variable probably of the last month. This month sales I regress with last month sales or this this month sale I regress with last year this month sale. Some variable but it's a time based variable. That's why I am calling it as auto regression. It's with the same variable. See earlier we regressed the price against the engine size. Some other variable. But this in this process I regress the price with the price of last month or with the price of last year same month anything but it's the same price but with a time period lag so whether it is one period lag one month lag two months lag what period lag it is called as a ar model of that period if i say ar1 model it means auto regression with a one month lag or one period lag. If I am considering all monthly data and if I say AR1 model, it means this month's values are regressed against last month's values. That is auto regression. That is one thing that is happening. And the second thing is moving average. The average of how many periods? See, when I say this month, and moving average of 3 periods. It means this month, last month, the month before. I take the average of these 3. The moment I go to the next month, next month, this month, the previous month. That is what we call as moving average. And the system will check, should I take the data as it is? Or should I take the average of last 2 months or 3 months? Right. So, depending on how many months average I am taking, it will become a MA that much model. If I say MA2 model, it becomes last two months average I have taken. Right. Which means now you see how many combinations will come up to do your prediction. How many months lag I have to take for regression. I can take one month, two months, three months, all possibilities exist. How many months average I have to take to be considered for regression? Two months, three months, four months or only one month? Then integration is the difference in the values. Let's say the prices are 10, 11, 12 for three months. When I am saying difference, I will take the difference between the months. When the numbers are 10, 11 and 13, I will do the regression with respect to the difference 1, 2. Rather than doing a regression on 10, 11, 12, I will do the regression on the differences. That is what is integrated. So, typically when I have to do my projection model, I have to see how many months lag data I have to consider. So, just trying your example, if you have 6-7 months data, now how many months lag I have to consider for building my forecast, which is an appropriate number because again the error has to be minimized, which is an appropriate model, how many months lag I have to look at, how many months moving average I have to take and should I take the actual number or should I take the differences. Based on this, these models are called ARIMA models. Time series, uh, time series forecast is heavily driven by the usage of these models called ARIMA models. And of course, if there are some seasonal factors, here I did not bring in any seasonal factor. Right? Seasonality. Some seasons it will be high, some seasons it will be low, some months it will be high, some months it will be low. Then there are some more models coming into picture. 
So if there is no seasonality factor, I can look at Arimas. And even if there is seasonality, probably along with Arima, I have to even bring in a seasonality adjustment factor. So what happens is, theoretically, if I have to learn the time series analysis, it becomes a huge volume because of these reasons. But the goodness is, SPSS has introduced a tool called Expert Modeler. It's like a package. What this package does for us is, you just need to give your input. It internally analyzes which ARIMA model is good. Should it go for one period lag, two period lag or should it go for uh, two moving averages, one moving average or uh, even the integrated or not. What has to be or even a seasonal adjustment has to be done. It does all kinds of internal analysis and finally gives you the forecast. It applies the best possible method well, from whatever are the list of methods that are there inside that. It applies the best possible method. It shows for each of them which method it has used. It shows the best possible, it, it uh, applies the best possible method and does the forecasting for you. So, your output is clearly known. What, what output that is forecasted based on this data? What method it has used, you will know. But how it has calculated that, we will not know. It's a black box for us. Right? Until we get into understanding how the time series analysis works and taking the data, doing a AR model, doing a I model, doing a MA model. Unless I do them manually, I may not understand the mathematical implication of that. But from a business or a from a from a decision standpoint, I can very well forecast my numbers. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take those numbers from a forecasting standpoint. We'll try to forecast the sales, men's, women's, as well as so it will take into consideration. Okay, this is upward trend, this is downward trend, or this is flat. This is having a seasonality adjustment. It will take all those factors, apply appropriate models, and give you the forecast. That is why it is called as expert modeler. So it's a it's like a one in, I mean, probably, again, there is a difference here. From it, Probably it must be applying from 6, 7, 8, 10 models. Right? But you can build your own models. So, expert modeler has some limitations at the end of the day. Right? If, if, if it works out of those 7, 8, 10 models, it can give you the output. But if it does not and you want to create some complex models or something, you need to understand the background behind it. Right? So let me try that numbers. So let me try doing the forecast uh, for this. Analyze, forecasting and you say create model. You are creating a model wherein the dependent, okay, you can uh, simply say the variables are these three. Sale of men's clothing, women's clothing and jewelry. But I mean don't bring in any kind of independent variables. Right, if I have to have independent variables, then probably I have to forecast the independent variables separately. So let's say these are the variables I would like to forecast based on the time. And I am using expert modeler. See, otherwise I need to use ARIMA as I just discussed. Again, how much of ARIMA, two model, three model, I have to do it manually. But if I use uh, expert modeler, it will take care. It will tell you what ARIMA model it, it has used also. It will tell you. So, expert modeler is taking into consideration everything. And now, coming to the statistics, you can, if you want to check what is the forecast, you say display the forecasted values. Probably for the next one month or two months or twelve months, if you want the forecast to be done, you can very well ask the system to display the forecast. And uh, the rest all is fine. Include all models in the output. So 
So whatever the SPSS can take care of as a part of the expert modeler, it will try to look in into all the models. So sometimes it may take a couple of minutes extra, but we don't need to understand the background. From that it will give you the output because of the expertise that it has. So you can say save the predicted value, show the predicted values in your system on that file itself. That's Those are the ones I have actually deleted. So it has, it has predicted these numbers and probably the lower limit as well as higher limit because uh, generally the prediction cannot be a bullet point. It's a range. So try to give the range also the lowest lower value, lower limit to the upper limit. And yeah, it's better you save the model so that you can predict it for the next 12 more months if you want. Now you have used this model to predict for next 6 months. But if you want to use the same model to predict for one more 6 months, instead of doing this entire model, you can load the model. I'll show you how to load the model and do this analysis. So I'm uh, going, let's say, saving this on the my documents. So I'll say time series, 25th December. And yeah, for how, how long you want the prediction to be done. So we have the data up to 1998, December. So I'll say 1999. Probably December for next one year I would like to project because we have the data up to 1998 December. I would like to forecast up to 1999 December on a monthly basis. So I am doing okay. You see this is the forecast it has given. Now you see the graphs also it has generated, we will come to that. So it is given the forecast like this. In Jan 1999 it is 22,020. In February it is falling. Based on how it was in the last periods. Then in March again slight increase compared to February. April again there is a dip. In May again small improvement. In June again a small improvement. July a small fall, but August there is a very big growth. Probably this is the, these guys are having more demand in August. Again September small dip, October again a very high demand, November again a small dip and probably December very exceptionally high demand. That could be the pattern that has been uh, shown Probably in the last. If I use any other mechanism apart from this time series model, I will get either a straight line going up or a straight line going down. I will not get this kind of patterns taking into consideration the seasonality and all those effects also. Look at uh, the women's now. See, all are not showing the same way. Women, there was a growth from Jan to Feb. Whereas in men, there was a drop from Jan to Feb. Right? So, so in women, in March, there is a very big jump. Whereas here, there is not too much of a jump. Right? So, whereas when it comes to jewelry, in February, compared to Jan, there is a very big jump. Again, the, in May, there is a very big jump. Which was not the case... Uh, in these two. So each item is predicted by taking its own data. And look at the graph also. The next 12 months graph for males clothing it is showing something like this. The blue one. More or less replicating the previous pattern. Whereas in case of February down, up and it is going like this. More or less replicating the shape. And this is how the for jewelry. So, I mean, this prediction has been done. What is the method it has used? So, this is the seasonality. Winter's models, Holt's models, they are typically uh, taking into consideration the seasonality in the data. Because our data has seasonality here. 
seasonal adjustments have to happen. But in some cases, it's a kind of a trend only. Not too much of seasonality in it. Then Arima will come into a picture very effectively. But if there is a lot of seasonal fluctuation in the data, some seasonality models, typically Holt model and Winter model, these are the two models which are taking care of seasonality. Without knowing what is a Holt model or Winter model now, we are able to predict by taking into consideration the seasonality impacts and everything, we are able to do the prediction for the future. So that's how the expert modeler of uh, any of these is really helping us in terms of uh, determining the forecast. Now let's say why only these three, just to test it out, I'll uh, even predict Let's say the remaining also. Just just for trying to see if any other model name would be given by the system. Because in all the three it has given winter additive only. So I wanted to just see if uh, some other name can be given out. Ah, now you see. For number of pages in the catalog it has given some other model. Simple seasonal model. Same thing with the amount spent on advertising. It's saying a simple seasonal model. So, it, it is not using an additive or a multiplicative model, but it is using a simple seasonal adjustment. And even for those things, the graphs could be much, much better. So, this is what should happen for this. So, it has done some adjustment. There was one big dip also in the historical data. But it is smoothening out that dip and doing the projection accordingly. Even here, if you see, this is what is the pattern it has projected for the next period. In case of this, this is the pattern it has projected. So, in some cases, there could be up. In some cases, there could be down. All kinds of things are being taken care by the model. So, you don't need to really bother about what kind of a model has to be used in this case. Right? It, it takes care of uh, the appropriate uh, model and it even uh, computes your... Uh, the forecast along with the upper and lower limits also. So at least uh, you'll know, okay, this much minimum I can sell, this much maximum also can be sold. These are my limits, but this is the appropriate forecasted number. So for any values which are based on your historical time, only time based, you want to do the forecast, it's better to do this kind of an analysis. Now let's say I have already saved the model and everything. Right now, I have forecasted up to June, I mean December 2000, December 1999. Let's say I want to use the same model and and project it for the remaining another 12 months. All I can do is analyze forecasting and I'll say apply model. There is something for apply model. So. <coughs> load the model file wherever I have saved it. I have saved I think in my docs. Time series 25th December. I am loading this model file and now you specify the period up to which you would like to do the estimate. So I will say 2000 December. Another 12 months. I want to do the estimate based on the same model. I am not revising the model. Right? Probably after 12 more months of data, I may think of revising the model based on the new data also. See, if that is the case, I need not save the model. But if I say, no, I will maintain this model for some more period. After that, I will look at my variance analysis, how much I am differing from the actuals. And based on that, I will revise my estimate and the model later then probably you can save the model and you can reuse it like this. Now when I am saying, okay, this is what is the predictions it is doing for 2000. This is for up to 1999 and up to 2000. These are what are the numbers it has predicted for 2000. Right? And while loading the model, I could have done 
even that uh, display forecast this display forecast and I can even uh, do the saving of the predicted and the lower and upper control limits then it will even do the predictions for uh, one more year now you see here now the Jan 2000 suddenly from 36 there is a dip to 23 again 21 22 22 31 21 21 22 24 23 26 and 37 these are the numbers that are coming out for 2000 so if i'm using the same model want to predict it for the next uh, few more periods i can do even the loading of the model and uh, and doing this kind of adjustment also so at the end in time series as far as the time series data is concerned what we typically uh, observe is the moment I load it, at least SPSS, this is a good part of the tool, SPSS. So without we getting into the, the nitty gritties of time series, I have seen books which are even worth 600 pages, 700 pages exclusively on time series analysis itself. I mean that's again volume 1. So, <laughs> so that's how the the, the world of time series is expanding. So, what this tool has captured is some 5, 6, 10 different models. Most common models. It has packaged. So, saying out of these, uh, if, these if your uh, numbers are falling within these uh, 10 different models, probably you don't need to apply the 10 and check. If it is manually, I have to check all the 10 models. Which one is a better fitment? And based on that, I'll say this is the model, so this is the forecast. But at least in, in this case, we are bypassing all those 10 models, manual checkings, everything. Finally, the system is giving this is my output. No, you can very well apply it, no? No one will say. No one will say because, I mean, See, unless he is a technical uh, user, right? See, I mean, logically speaking, if I am if I am looking at it from a business user's perspective, a decision or an output is required for me. What model you are using, as long as you are able to justify that model. See, okay. See, if if it is the uh, see what here it is doing is. Out of the 7-8 models, it is picking the best fit model for that data. As you have seen, in some cases it is showing simple seasonal and in some cases it has shown winter additive. In some cases it will show Arima 101, whatever it is. So, it is choosing the best of the possible lot of models. But if someone has used one model and as per the system, it's not the best possible model. Now, you have to take a decision. Whether I will continue using that old model which is not the best one or I would like to upgrade myself to the best possible model. <clears throat> but if I have to use it manually, I mean that same model, I need to understand the ARIMA based process and uh, and then give the inputs accordingly. I cannot go with, uh, I cannot, uh, go, so probably instead of doing the expert model there, right, instead of going with the expert model there, what I may have to, sorry, I'll go with uh, create model. Instead of going with the expert modeler there, I'll go with the Arima. Right, it is uh, saying Arima 000 to start with. But then, I have to very well mention what period of Arima and all I have to go with. One, see, one lakh, two lakh. So, if you know this guy has already used uh, Arima 202 model, so probably you specify 202, some model. If he has specified all that, so you specify that model and then you run it. So, probably you should have forecasted the values. So, based on the ARIMA 202 model, it is giving me what are the numbers. Okay, let me then 
even to uh, it has given the forecast right so based on the arima 202 model it is giving the forecast now these forecasts may or may not be anywhere consistent you see the graphs if i use the arima 202 model the forecast for men's clothing is like this is this the forecast for men's clothing you are looking at the forecast for women's clothing is like this this is not the number we are looking at right so if someone has given you the model and if i am applying the model this is how i am getting my forecast so in some cases this model will be very good whereas in this case this model is not good anyway <laughs> getting it so i mean uh, without getting into headache of understanding each of these uh, models and what shape it is coming out because this is showing a very big error probably if i use 202 model to forecast these numbers i am ending up in big big errors whereas in case of uh, that seasonal at least in this example see in some other example 202 will be a very good hit but what our uh, expert modeler is doing is it is trying to identify those kind of models and based on that it is directly giving us the solution so that is what is the advantage that could be derived using those models yeah yeah the lower intervals and upper intervals are there right Mm, no that that cannot come out because that again you have to do it with respect to regression so you take uh, the actual values because what is this what does this mean by i am confident 80% that i'll get this number right i mean see what it is saying is its lower control limit is this one upper control limit is this one which means the value can lie between 14000 to 36000 because of the kind of variance that is existing in the data so though the average value is 25 but it can very well lie between 14 and 36 so probably you try to assign the confidence interval in that area only i mean the, the kind of sales that were generated are too high i mean the variation in the sales data is too high it's not able to give me a range anything better than that probably in some other data that uh, range will be pretty narrow ucl and lcl let's say in some of the cases you see here number of pages in the catalog model 70 on an average but 46 to 94 in some cases uh, it is this numbers are more than 50% difference in some cases the differences are much much lesser also so i mean that cannot be avoided because uh, The, the that level is based on that level is based on uh, the standard deviation that is already ex existing on the data set making it uh, making it normal means i have to eliminate see obvious in this data i cannot make it normal the reason being the data is always an increasing data or a decreasing data data need not be normal if it has to be normal see it is normal only when you are uh, looking at see uh, only when you are looking at probably uh, some high value some low value but majority of the times it's in the average but in case of time series data what we observe is the data may keep growing at all for for some or probably a fall there is a trend in the data so you sh you cannot uh, apply your uh, normality check in case of a time series model you 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 should not i mean there is no meaning to that the normality check in case of a time series model there is no meaning to that probably the growth in a time series model you apply a normality check in some months there is a 10% growth in some months there is a 2% growth in some months there is a 5% fall the growth can still be looked at on a normality front but uh, the the values cannot be looked on a normality front especially the time series data 